Hey everyone, my name is Will Valida. I'm a software engineer and cloud architect. And in this video, we're going to learn all about the Semantic Kernel SDK. Now, the Semantic Kernel SDK is an open source SDK that allows us to integrate large language models into our applications. They're essentially an open source SDK that can help us build agents that call our existing code. So as an extensible SDK, we can use Semantic Kernel to use large language models from OpenAI, Azure OpenAI, and Hugging Face, and, and more. We can do this by combining our existing c -sharp, Python, and Java code with these models so that we can build agents that answer questions and kind of automate processes for us. Now, the Semantic Kernel SDK allows us to build our own custom AI agents, and these are programs that can achieve predetermined goals. The large language models that we use are trained on a massive amounts of data, and agents can then perform a wide variety of tasks with some or minimal human intervention. So to use a good example of this, a co-pilot is a type of AI agent. So it's not going to do all the work for you, but using those large language models, it can help you by providing suggestions and recommendations. And a really good example of this is GitHub Copilot. Now, Semantic Kernel can integrate large language models into your application um, from sources like Azure OpenAI, Hugging Face, OpenAI, et cetera. And essentially what we can do is we can create plugins that interface with large language models and perform all sorts of tasks. So take a look at this diagram here. So Semantic Kernel is essentially engineered in such a way that it's easy to add to our existing code to our AI agents uh, with plugins. So these plugins, you can give your agents the ability to kind of interact with real world with the real world by calling your existing apps and services. So in this way, your plugins, or the plugins here, are really the arms and hands of your AI application. Semantic Kernel also has a bunch of interfaces that allow it to flexibly integrate to any AI services. And this is done through a set of connectors that make it easy to add memories and AI models. So in this way, you can think about Semantic Kernel being able to add a simulated brain to your application that you can easily swap out as newer and better AI models become available. Now, because uh, semantic, uh, the Semantic Kernel uh, SDK provides a bunch of it, um, extensibility for us, um, this is done through connectors and plugins. So you can actually use it to orchestrate nearly all of your existing code without having to be locked to a specific AI model provider. So for example, if you had a bunch of plugins for uh, OpenAI's ChatGBT, you can actually use Semantic Kernel to orchestrate them with other models from other providers like Azure OpenAI or Hugging Face. Um, so as a developer, you can just use different components of Semantic Kernel separately. So for example, if you just need an abstraction over OpenAI and Azure OpenAI services, we could just use this SDK to kind of run prompts. Um, but the real power is that you can actually do this by combining all of these components easily together. Now, there are three kind of um, key components of the SDK, which I've kind of listed out in, in this kind of list over here. So very first is this AI orchestration layer that I talked about. And this is at the very core of the semantic kernel stack. Now, this orchestration layer kind of enables that integration of AI models and plugins. So you kind of orchestrate between your different uh, providers like um, OpenAI, Hugging Face, and Azure OpenAI. Then you've got your connectors. Now, the SDK provides a set of connectors that kind of enable us to integrate large language models into our applications. These uh, connectors you can think about as bridging the gap between our application code and the AI models. And then finally, you've got plugins. So this consists of prompts that you want the AI model to respond to and functions that can complete specialized tasks. And with this, there's a whole bunch of pre-built-in plugins uh, that are made available to us, or we can actually create our own. Now, the whole point of this is integrating AI into our applications can be complex. Developers, when we use kind of service-specific APIs, we have to learn what those um, specific APIs can do and also the details of the large language models that we want to integrate within our application. So really what Semantic Kernel does, or the advantage of Semantic Kernel, is that it actually offers a simplified integration of AI capabilities 
into existing applications. So you can think of the SDK as really providing an abstraction layer, which kind of lowers the barrier of entry for us as new developers. And it also supports the ability to kind of fine tune prompts to provide a predictable user experience. So let's actually go ahead and build a very simple, very straightforward semantic kernel application. So here I am in Visual Studio. Now we're going to build a very basic application using the semantic kernel SDK. Uh, and for this, this is going to be a .NET 8 application. Um, I've also got an app settings.json file with a bunch of um, settings that I'm going to be using for my application. I've also got kind of preloaded already. Uh, an Azure OpenAI um, resource deployed in my Azure application, uh, uh, in my Azure subscription, sorry. Now you do need your um, subscription kind of approved to use Azure OpenAI. Um, so if you haven't got that, I'll include a, a form that you can fill out in the, uh, in the uh, description below. But since I've got all of this um, kind of up and running, the first thing I wanna do is actually install the semantic kernel SDK. So I'm actually gonna go ahead manage my new get packages and I'm going to browse and I'm going to look for uh, search for Microsoft dot semantic kernel and make sure I spot kernel rights with E not a and there we go so the latest is 1.5 at time of recording so I'm going to go ahead and install that just apply that accept Cool, so that looks like it's installed. I'll check my CS proj file. Yep, there it is. Cool, okay, uh, save everything. And of course, I'm gonna be loading some, ex um, some configuration as well. So I wanna install extensions configuration.json. This is the one that I want because I'm uploading this app settings.json file. So I'm gonna apply that. Check my CS proj file, get rid of that. And yeah, that's all um, installed for me. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to make sure this is actually gonna copy to the build output each time. So it can actually find it, go back into Solution Explorer. Cool, that's awesome. Now, before you write any code, essentially what we need to do is actually create an endpoint for our large language model that we're gonna be using in our application. So. To do this for Azure OpenAI, we can create a new model to use uh, within the Azure OpenAI Studio. So I'm going to go back into my Azure OpenAI Studio. Um, just going to get some more real estate here. Cool. Okay. So I've got, actually, get some more real estate going. Right. That might be a little small on the screen, but essentially what I've got here is I've got a bunch of deployments that use a certain model. So if I actually create a new deployment, there's a whole bunch of base models that um, Azure OpenAI provides. Um, I've already created this, but essentially we're going to use ChatGPT 3.5. Um, oh, ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, this one here, and that's just that's a model that's going to be able to generate uh, natural language and also does a bit of code generation as well. So there's my deployment name. I also need kind of my endpoint and also my API keys, which you can grab from the Azure portal itself. But what I'm going to do, is just go back into my program.cs file. I won't show you the contents of my app um, settings.json file. There are secrets in there. So I have been called out on a previous video for kind of showing my secrets for one second. Those resources have been long destroyed, um, but we don't want to make that same mistake again. Cool, now within our application code, we need to kind of create our kernel objects. So first things first, I'm going to create my new configuration builder. And this is just essentially going to load my app settings.json file. So I'm gonna add my JSON file, settings, dot settings, not setting, dot JSON file. And I'm just going to be able to build that as well. So that's going to build my configuration. Now, I'm going to go var builder. I'm going to use a kernel. And we're going to create a new kernel using the create builder. Remove, because it's not a method that we're calling. There we go. 
Right, so now I've got my kernel created. So now what I want to do, since I'm calling a model in Azure OpenAI, what I want to do is kind of create or add, sorry, a plugin that's going to be able to call that Azure OpenAI model. So from my builder object, I'm going to add a service. This should be very familiar to you if you have done any um, ASP.NET ASP core development. Cool. So here I'm going to add first the name of my deployment model. And I've got a configuration setting called deployment model. Then I'm going to add one for my Azure OpenAI. I'm actually going to AI endpoint. So this will be the endpoint for my Azure AI resource. And then finally, authenticate. I'm going to use the Azure OpenAI key. Cool. So there I've added my plugin that's going to call my Azure OpenAI uh, model. And then finally, I'm actually going to build my kernel object. So builder.build. So just to hover over that, there's my kernel object. So now that I've got that, I can essentially test that my endpoint is working. So I'm going to invoke a prompt onto my AI agent. So var results, I'm going to store it in a result object. I'm going to make a call to this kernel. I'm going to invoke and prompt async. And I'm going to say, OK, give me a list of leg exercises that I can do at the gym. Do in the gym. So that's going to be my prompt. And then to do that, I'm just going to console right line the result. Ooh, so now everything's there. I'm just going to do a quick build, make sure everything's good. Fantastic. That build was successful. So now I'm just going to run this code. And there are my leg exercises. So I've got squats, deadlifts, lunges, leg press, uh, Bulgarian split squats, love those, step ups, calf raises, leg extensions, leg curls, glute bridges, etc. Uh, and it's also reminding me to use proper form and technique. That's very important, particularly when you're getting old and cantankerous like I am. Cool. So that response comes from our Azure OpenAI model that we've passed to our kernel. So what the semantic kernel has really done here, it's connected to our large language model and it runs the prompt. So for those of you who have a little bit of experience with working with Azure OpenAI, may be very familiar with the C-sharp SDK. Um, instead of doing that here, all we've done is on this line here, we have added the plugin for Azure OpenAI. And then the semantic kernel SDK has acted as an AI orchestration layer between our code and the large language model that we used from Azure OpenAI, which has given us our results back. Cool. So this was a very short video on the semantic kernel, um, what it does, how we can use it to build kernel agents, and how we can actually work with the SDK. I'm looking to do a little bit more videos. Um, I'll do some more videos, sorry, on the semantic kernel as I learn more about it. So if you like this video, give it a like. Um, if you want to find uh, learn more about the semantic kernel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comment section below. No matter where you are in the world, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you all next time.